and welcome to the Game Brew Podcast, episode 69. Hello! I am 69. your host, Ian Sailor Jupiter Richard, and I am here in the high tech, soundproof penthouse recording studio at MAGFest with Dan Sailor Moon Rots. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> That's not the sound you make. Chris Sailor Venus writes. That's me. Allison Tuxedo Mask Vandevender. I'm so suave. <laughs> and Alex Sailor Mercury Writer. Hello. <laughs> That's what she we does, sound like. She right? said that once. And Fee Sailor Saturn Wen. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> this is what I've been writing on the script. I like how you're just like, I'm done hosting. I'm done. I don't know how anything works. <laughs> on the first half of the podcast, we'll be talking about our experience at MAGFest, as well as talking about what cosplaying is and what it adds to the experience of a convention. And in the second half, we'll be doing a Game Brew retrospective and uh, taking some questions from our listeners. But first, it's time for a beer. Chris, what are we drinking this week? The delicious Maryland, well, not from Maryland anymore, but from Maryland, sort of, Natty Bo, National Bohemian. National Bohemian. Live pleasantly. This beer is good because it's funkier than other light beers. It's just, there's like a funkiness to it. It's almost, it's like, a it's like mushrooms in a way, right? You know how there's like a little bit of like dirt it's on a mushroom? some, some uh... Umami, that's the word. It's some umami. umami. That is the word. <laughs> umami. It's episode 69. Umami. umami. <laughs> it's definitely my favorite cheap light beer. So if I'm doing a lot of day drinking like I am here, it's what I, it's my go-to. Also, the logo is just so on point. Mm-hmm. It's a dapper man with a mustache and I believe a monocle or maybe he just has Gross. one eye. It's a monocle. It's a monocle. I'm not going to lie. I thought that was, I've seen that logo a lot of places and I thought it was a sportsy thing. I had no idea. They used to, I think, sponsor the Orioles, I, I believe, back in like the 70s. Know, maybe. That could be a game brew fact. But awesome. Game brew fact. <laughs> I like the fact that a game brew fact is now something that we know is probably not true, <laughs> yeah. but we say it anyway. Um, <clears throat> what are our other thoughts on the beer? I mean, I, I actually really love this beer. Yeah, it's drinkable. When it when they started selling it in Pennsylvania, I was I was freaking pumped it's way better than yingling that's for sure that's mm, not mm. that's not a true statement i don't think this and yingling occupy the same space yeah, like they I, live in different I think they do. they're they're I both don't. they're both loggers they're both loggers i think they're both regional they're both east coast regional loggers that are fairly light and drinkable but beyond that i think <laughs> i think i think yingling is a lot hoppier than natty Bo is which sure. is not saying a whole lot because neither of them are super hoppy yeah. uh, but i also think it, uh, yingling has more of a toasted flavor whereas this is like more like we were talking about like more an umami flavor yeah this than is yingling this is. is a little bitier yeah like, it's crisp, no, crisp. Yeah, crisp. 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 Than like yingling. yingling yingling is something i would drink a lot of but all, like in the summertime but also in the wintertime i could drink a bunch of yinglings too this is more of a summer beer to me like even though i'm drinking it right now and it's the winter time it's gonna get hot in this hotel room pretty soon but so yeah right i guess the other thing that we should address is that we are actually here all in person together Yay. for the very first time which is so exciting it's very weird to look at your faces while you're talking in person like in person like it's in just person. very weird that i can go do 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 and there's everybody versus like block here block here block and here. you're trying to like arrange all this shit on your screen it's right and if ass. i minimize it for any reason you guys are just gone i don't yeah. know <laughs> and, and none of us are in a laundry room that's true. I, I'm not <laughs> recording in a laundry room anymore. I've I've moved up and in the so world. We do Thank we do you. we don't have to wear pants, but I, w- I we, we we are wearing, wearing pants. pants. Oh, that's fair. I I'm never wear pants, pants when well, I record. Not you this not you heard time. it here first. This is the first fully pants to Game Brew podcast. <laughs> you, can only, you can only see me from here. I feel up. like it's episode sixty nine being the first fully pants episode is kind feels of sad. Wrong. Yeah, feels that wrong. feels wrong. Feels wrong. This is exactly well. Oh God! Oh, to be God. fair, I'm in a skirt, so I. Dan's are almost not. Pants. Yeah, mine are almost not pants. <laughs> That's true. What was I gonna say? We are. Uh, we would be remiss if we did not mention that we are missing Will Shell today from the founding members of the it Game Group Podcast. Sad. He was not able to make it, but uh, he, I'm sure, is here with us in Force Ghost and uh, Force Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> we'll hear from him when we need it, like a pep talk for some reason about something. Yeah, that's yeah. all you can sing of that before yeah, we get yeah, sued for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna sing thanks a song for, that's like that, but isn't that? Da na na ni na nu nu ni ni. 
thing. <laughs> it's different. It's a different song. It is. From the one you're thinking of, it's completely That's different. That's the vanilla ice. Um, <laughs> no, so, I, no, I, I added that defense. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason we are gathered here today is because we are all here attending MAGFest. So MAGFest stands for the Music and Gaming Festival. Super MAGFest, which is the flagship convention for MAGFest, takes place here in the Gaylord National Harbor. And uh, Chris has been coming for eight years, five, nine years? Five years. Well, okay, five years. This Calm is my, I'm this not that is, old. This is my <laughs> second year, and I have been having a great time. I know you all have too. So what are, our, like, what are some of the favorite things that we've done or seen so far here at the Gaylord? I really like doing the magic draft in our room. Um, so we bought we bought a bunch of magic cards down on the exhibit floor. What do you floor. love about this conference? Not being at it. <laughs> no, but like, I mean, we're at it because we're all together in the room. Like, that doesn't happen anywhere else, and that's really cool. Yes. Um, in the meat space. In the meat space. But I thought that was really cool, and, and I've never done one a draft like that before, so that was a lot of fun for me. Yeah, can you explain what a draft is? Because I don't think everybody else out there knows. Yeah, so basically with a magic draft, everyone brings three packs of cards. We bought a bunch down at the exhibit hall, and everyone lines up next to each other, and everyone opens a pack and passes to the left and open and keeps going through all 15 cards. So you take cards. one, and you then take you one pass, and pass the it. other 14 to the left, and everyone does this in a circle. And Until you finish that pack after it gets passed around, and then you open a second one and a third one, and then you basically build a deck out of what cards you got. So basically, with your first few packs, you kind of figure out what colors you're going to be using and try to build something competitive from there. Right. So what's funny is to me about this is I actually bumped, bumped into this digitally before I ever did it physically. So there are drafting modes in most of the CCG card games mm -hmm. that I play, yeah. but I've never done it physically. And it was so much more compelling and so much easier physically because you, for some reason, like holding the cards and physically seeing them, I had a better idea of what I already had. Whereas when I'm drafting in like Hearthstone or something, like the art or oh, and the animations on the cards are so attractive that I like forget about the thing that I had before. <laughs> it's pretty. It's so shiny. I have, I have I want short term pretty. memory loss. I want it. Um, but I really enjoyed that process too. And then having a little bit of a round robin tournament in the rooms afterwards was mm -hmm. super cool. Yeah. You, Ian kicked my ass in that. He kicked my ass. Yeah, I kicked Dan's ass, then Chris kicked my ass, and then Chris got his ass kicked by... Jay. Yay, Yay Jay! Jay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Jay's deck was really good. Yeah. Nice. So, that was really fun. Dan, what about you, man? I don't know. For, it's like, the, everything is really cool. I like going to listen to some of the stuff. I really... I'm a people watcher, so... Well, you're in the right spot, I friend. know. Conventions are my favorite place just to be kind of like... I just like observing people. So, like, whenever you see, like, all the cool cosplays and stuff like that going around, I'm not going to approach these people at all because I'm also very antisocial. But I am going to stand there and go, oh, that's really cool. I really like that, like, awesome... Uh, power armor that one because we walked by that one guy he had oh, like yeah. a suit, space a marine full... power armor and then there was also the fallout the, power there was armor. fallout yeah. power armor there was space marine power armor that was out there it was really cool there's a like incredible uh not a mega man x but a mega man the red mega man oh, x zero. guy zero mega yeah man zero. i saw a guy that was dressed up as the bad guy from resident evil 2 mr mr Mr. X. Mr. X. Yeah, yeah. I saw a guy dressed Mr. up as Mr. X. X. Mr. X. But yeah, if, stomp, stomp, if you stomp, stomp, next stomp. time we do this, hopefully next year, we should get an atrium room then so we can like stare yeah. at all the yeah, people. So be real creepy. <laughs> I, I did approach a couple of the, We should talk about cosplay stuff later, but yeah. I, I have approached a couple of cosplay people with costumes that I just really loved. Um, and everyone has been super cool and warm yeah. and inviting, which has been excellent. Yeah. Also, yeah. my love of pinball has come back Same. Oh. i miss my windows computer where i had the pinball game on it <laughs> the mm -hmm. space pinball that, the space, space, space arcade 3d space arcade 3d it was great i freaking love yeah i was playing a bunch of pinball too it was a lot <laughs> so of fun. good what cabinets uh, i really liked that one that we were playing the one the other night that was really fast it was the rob zombie one. Oh, the rob zombie was, one was intense it was intense but it also had like a really steep angle so mm, everything happened so yeah quickly and it, like we had a bonus round that popped in. There were two balls. I was like, oh, yay. I um, I really liked there was one called Monster Bash. And basically. It, was it a bash? It was. It was a graveyard smash. All right. Nice. Yeah. Um, but basically every time you, you could fight different monsters and stuff. And when you got Dracula to come out, you have to hit him five times to defeat him. But, but then when you fight Frankenstein, but. like three balls will just appear and like you have, it's just chaos. That's it was, cool. It was a lot of fun. It did like a lot of cool different things. It's easier to love pinball. I find when you don't have to pay money for it yes. because yeah. 50 cents for three balls can go real fast. Yes, it can. Unless you're really good at pinball. Or there was some pinball machines that like, 
if you failed within the first second, it would be like, here's your ball back. <laughs> yeah. And, right. and I really appreciated that. Well, and, the, and when I was in Texas, actually, Austin, Texas, there's a place called Pinballs. And we went there and it was really, really cool. It was like a Dave and Buster's, but with more pinball machines than nice. anything. That's it had cool. other stuff too, um, but also had a bar and everything. Nice. Um, I really enjoyed that, but you're right. Like I, they give you a game card, so you're not technically using coins, which makes it go faster because you're not registering right. like how much you're how much Oh, but you're still paying together. like 50 cents a play? At least. Oh, God. So, I mean, some of them brutal. are 75, some of them are, are a dollar. Oh, but they God. had like all kinds of classic ones. Um, and you could actually buy them off the floor and walk out with a pinball machine no, if you wanted. They awesome. all had prices. Shut the front on door. Them. Yeah. They just restore them, put That'll them on the floor to play, and then you, <laughs> you literally just walk out with one of the pinball machines if you feel like it. That's for so thousands cool. of dollars. For sure. But, but yeah. still. Um, but yeah, when I was going around and playing, I just lost my money a lot faster than I felt like I actually was. Yeah, um, that's dangerous. Mm-hmm. At least physical quarters, you're like, okay, I guess I'm not doing right. laundry you this look, week. <laughs> you look and you're yeah, like, I, oh, I, I can only play three laundry, more. Yes, that is true. Yeah. I have a logistics question. Is it pinballs, like pinball apostrophe S? Like like if I'm pretty sure it was with a Z. Oh, oh, well, then that's, that's, that's just mm. 21st century. Yeah, right? that is... I'd have to confirm. But okay. Got it. Alex, what about you? I really like the indie room. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, of course. Indie yeah. The indie room really has cool. been a lot of fun to play. Specifically, any games that you want to call out? Circumnavigate? Circumnavigate Navigator. was great. Oh, my Which gosh. Was that? This was the, the button one. So Circumnavigate the one is a game kind of where the there, I think it's 12 buttons on the top of a, essentially a, a cylinder that's about as big as a human be- being. And um, the screen goes around the outside of the cylinder, and each player is a colored LED that rotates around the cylinder. Now, while this is happening, there are different, like, gates that, like, either they kill you or they speed you up or they change your direction. And uh, what you're trying to do is to kill other people's dots by changing where those gates are. So, basically, you and the other players are rotating around the cylinder, hammering on buttons, trying to kill their dot while keeping yours safe. And if your dot dies you can still mess up everyone else's dot by <laughs> trying by to go like, no, yeah it out. That, that is a really cool game and super fun to play with people yeah. you know because you can kind of bump shoulders and yeah. it's a very physical video game mm-hmm. it's yeah. like football but for gamers <laughs> don't worry about not like madden not like madden <laughs> not, like madden. <laughs> not like madden that's different football for gamers uh kung fu kickball was really good kung fu yeah. kickball was kung fu great kung fu kickball was, was really good, good. i like that it was, was like 2d um, 2D Rocket League, or, yeah. or, or you could if you ever played Super Dodgeball on the NES. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like that. It's kind of like but that for kicking. I also I like Dodo Peak was was Dodo a fun. Was it was a really cute, to... fun kind of a throwback to a early 2000s mm-hmm. platformer. Oh, even uh, farther. That's like yeah. it's like it's got Q-Bert-y. it's got heavy Cubert influences, and Cubert was yeah. like. Early, like 90s, maybe late 80s, I want to say. And um, that was really cool. That was Patrick. Was that was the name that we talked to? I think his name was Patrick. Patrick. Yeah, Damn, that was, it was the developer. Damn, Daniel. Uh, the uh, We talked to him a little bit about like the process of it, too. Let me see if we can maybe get him to talk about creation at some point because yeah. it was really interesting just talking about the process that he was going through when he was doing it. And we talked, you and Alex, you and him talked for a while about like sound stuff Mm -hmm. too about like the about like the quality of like audio oh yeah yeah. well and just like because i'm an audio engineer like it are you did you do any projects recently yeah Yeah, what did you do recently (laughs) (laughs) so this dodo peak game (laughs) (laughs) but no i it the psychology of using different sounds in video game design in order to either move a character to do something in the gameplay or to uh, interact in the game a certain way based on major chords, minor chords, tritones. Like there are certain cues that you can use in in sound design to influence and affect kind of how gameplay so it's, happens. It's an addition to just like sound effects and foley that sort of thing. Oh like yeah, it's, yeah, it's more It's more even about just how the atmospheric music is written. Mm-hmm. Very cool, yeah. uh, Allison. Well, I'm going to talk about mine more in the in the next part because mine was doing cosplay. Sure, so yeah, 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 sure. That was my favorite Fee, thing. Then I want to say it's the people, you know. Yeah. Um, just being here, everyone for the most part seems really cool. Everyone's really chill. You know what I mean? Compared to other cons, I guess. Like sometimes you would walk up to cosplayers or gamers, and they can seem kind of standoffish. But here, everyone's like 
happy. They're giving you high fives, you know, coming off the elevators and things yeah. like that. Uh, so dance that, party in the elevator. Yeah, yeah. dance yeah. party. We were right? just trading letter Kenny quotes in the elevator with a skid. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was yeah. great. Yeah, like yeah. that's that's not something you experience other places. I think. Right. Yeah, we were rocking out to some initial D music, you know, in the elevator. Yeah. So <laughs> it's it's great. You know, it's uh, so the, the the people, the atmosphere, re- really makes it for me. Yeah, that's awesome. So <clears throat> one of the things about the people and about the atmosphere here uh, at MAGFest is that there is so much cosplaying and and really some some extraordinarily, at least to me, some extraordinary yeah. high quality really stuff out stuff. there. Um, and so we wanted to talk about what cosplaying brings to a con and how it can change your experience if you are cosplaying there. And Allison, I want to hand it over to you first to kind of talk about those two things because you are a resident expert when it comes to cosplaying. I don't know about expert. But I, Re- I've taught myself Compared many us. a things. She's resident expert. <laughs> She's dabbled. That's what we pay you the zero dollars for. Um, yeah. So this year was my first time really going hard. I've done a lot of light cosplaying, I would say, and I've done tiny pieces that I've made myself out of foam and things like that. But this was the first time that I built armor, mm-hmm. and I and who are you building armor? What was the oh cosplay? yeah? Sorry, I did Camilla from Fire Emblem. Can you describe Fates. what she looks like for those who us who might know? Not um, hot pull up I mean, obviously. <laughs> purple hair. So cute. There we go. Um, oh my gosh, she's got like these armor claw spikes. Yeah, she on her could hips. use a pair of pants. She couldn't be on the podcast today because it's a pants. Yeah, it's a, it's a pants yeah, podcast. Yeah, it's true. It's true. It's a pants podcast. Pants so she podcast. couldn't be here. That's true. Um, she does kind of wear crotchless pants. No, doesn't yeah, she? the first thing my mom said when she was like, because I was just a mess. I was working on this cosplay for weeks. I had stuff everywhere, and my my mom would come into the living room, and she's like, "I just, what are you doing? I've tried to look it up. I don't, I don't, haven't seen it." And so I told her exactly what to look up, and she comes back out of her bedroom and goes. So you're wearing assless chaps with just like a thong? <laughs> and you were like, yep, nailed it, mom. Not yes. a thong. <laughs> I am not that body confident, mom. I am definitely wearing pants. Yeah. I like like nice underwear that will cover everything. It'll be fine. Um, but yeah, no, it was it was really fun. This is the most accurate thing I feel so, like I did. So. Yeah. So you were, like it was obviously a lot of work to do this. Mm-hmm. Why go through all that pain? Like what makes it worth it? I don't know. So to be honest, before I did this, I had hella anxiety about actually executing it and then walking out into this environment because I have social anxiety and just being there on display in a slightly revealing outfit, as well as like somebody who likes the game if they didn't like what I did. Like that, that also was an anxiety for me. So it was really important to get it right. Yeah. And speaking towards the like the anxiety about it, like we did a bunch of Sailor Moon cosplays today, and we did kind of gender nice. gender swapped. And for me, it was a l- kind of similar, like out of my comfort zone because I don't normally wear shorts that are uh, like eight inches above my knee. Yeah, uh, I'm but still you wearing those good. shorts. But, <laughs> but at least, but at least a, you measure it from above the knee and not below the crotch. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's about three this inches is like eight below inches dick, above right? The knee. <laughs> But, three but, inches BD. That's what I refer to those. <laughs> but it was kind of something that, I mean, here, and it kind of goes with what Fee said earlier. It's such a welcoming area and like yeah. people will appreciate it and like won't just shit on you if it's stupid looking. No, not only did right. people not shit on And these were like, it was a pretty light uh, it was it was pretty lazy. Cosplay. It was like sort of lazy. I wouldn't say yeah. lazy. I would say it's kind of like you know how people do that thing called Disney bounding now, where yeah. it's like they do. What? It was a little that? Disney. Disney bounding. bounding is where this is this thing. It's actually really cool. Where you so don't... you can't cosplay at right. Disney. Let me start there. You can't wear an exact replica of a character at right. Disney because, because they, they have the characters right. right, and they don't want it to get confusing. So but, what instead you do yeah. is you wear an outfit that is reminiscent of those characters. So like some people go in as Ariel and Prince Eric. So the guy's like, so she's wearing like, oh, it's it's just like some it's like green pants, some and green pants. I've got, mm-hmm. uh, I, I dyed my hair red and just then a bikini I'm, top. I'm wearing like a bikini <laughs> top with like, blue, with like purple shells, shells or, or like, yeah. you know, like a tank like top a purple, with purple shells or something like that. Top, yeah. yeah. And then like okay. a little seashell thing and maybe they've got a little crab on their shoulder or something so you like, like you look at it and go you're yeah. doing ariel yeah. but and you're not like, yeah. the guy's wearing like blue ariel, pants exactly. and a white button right. down shirt and so he's it was got kind a dog of, it he's was got kind a dog. Of gender swapped version of that <laughs> yes yeah. but for sailor moon and even with that 
not only did people not shit on us, but it was like, hey, can we take your picture? And we're like, yeah, yeah okay, yeah, fine. Go it. for it. That's fine. It was or really cool. Like people. people just like slide in when we were taking pictures and be like, click and yeah. just like walk away, which is something I totally do to people when they're lined up in yeah. a big group because yeah. I don't want to bother them to get back in group later. Yeah. I wonder then, is it is it really about the picture or is it about something else? For me personally, my big thing is getting it right. Mm. So that's something that when somebody asked to take my picture, then I know I did something right and that feels nice. Sure. Or uh, it's not even that. It's like somebody just saying, hey, great job. Or I love that. Or good work on or blank. Or just recognizing it. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, it's like... Oh my God, your Sailor Moon character is so cute. You know, that's great. For me, it's like, it's kind of the same reason people come to cons is like to, to find their people. And if you're wearing a character from a game you like then immediately you find your people. Yeah. And and that's what I think. That that was kind of my thing is that, yeah, it was like individually weird for all of us to do this Sailor Moon thing because I don't, like, not really all of us are into Sailor Moon. No. But when we were in light, hilariously short-panted cosplay, <laughs> there great. was like a sense of community there. Yeah. We you were guys found the something. Powerpuff guy, We found the Powerpuff yeah. guys. <laughs> Power, right, the Powerpuff guys, which were great too. My um, favorite my favorite thing one of them said yeah, was so, like, I was like, who's the leader? Bubbles. I was like, yeah, I got just got out of prison, so probably. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all standing there with like Coors Lights. <laughs> just like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> it was great. Shout out to the Powerpuff guys. Um, Fee, you also did some cosplaying uh, here at the con. So, what was your what was your motivation there, and and what were you doing? Yeah, it's um, I I really loved Fire Emblem games, and um, Lon Ku, the the guy that I cosplayed, I I I felt like I should kind of pay respect to that character. You know what I mean? And like Allison, I wanted to do it right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and he he's a more quiet character, but at the same time, he had a lot of impact to the story. You know, to um, Crom's army, so that's that's Crom, ma- Crom, 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 yeah, Crom, Crom, no e, no e, <laughs> no, no e, Crom, yeah. How do we know it's not Trom? <laughs> we don't. Well, it's, we it's don't. It's not Tris. So. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not Tristopher. So <laughs> Tris. <laughs> you are now. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's um, uh, apart from that. This is something that's that, again that's new to me. You know, this is the first year that I really went hard. Two days worth hard um, <laughs> so into nice cosplay. Nice. <laughs> it, was, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of work, right? But uh, at the end of the day, you know, I got a lot of respect, a lot of um, high fives, and hey, Long Ku, we love you. You know what I mean? Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so again, like Allison, I felt like I did something right, and uh, that's uh, that. That's mainly the goal. You well, know? and you like you like doing characters too, like. You, you get really deep into like the character of somebody you're going to cosplay. If you yeah. don't feel like you can't pull it off, right? Then you're not going to do it. So right. That's another I, thing. I, again, I, I really want to nail the character. You know, like because I, I don't want to do it if, if I can't be them. You know what I mean? When you do cosplay and you're talking about getting into character, yeah, like that entire day you're in costume. Mm-hmm. How much are you acting like that character? <laughs> um, it's it's hard. Right, like I, I oh, want yeah. to be like the entire day, right? Because Long Ku, his character is kind of like he's nervous, and he gets flustered easily, so he he can kind of seem standoffish, you know what I mean? But it's, it's also hard to do that when everyone's like, "Hey, your your cosplay is great," you know? Like I don't want to be that guy that that just blows him off, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But um, whatever they do, ask for a picture, <laughs> hey, and your things like that. Great. Mm. <laughs> yeah, right. Walk off. Right, right, right. Mm. I'm not gonna do that. Mm. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? When they do ask for a picture and things like that, I definitely really try to kind of get that persona, which yeah, is something the, the he picture. does better than me in pictures. Because, like, especially at the first, the first picture somebody took of me, they put it on Instagram and tagged me in it, and my face was just kind of like, duh, oh. hi. Um, and and then I realized, like, oh yeah, people probably want the character. I need to kind of yeah. do that, and that's hard for me sometimes. Whereas it comes naturally for him. But n- next year when we do ours, we talked about like trying to be in character the whole time versus, you know, kind of flighty in and out. And let me know what that. I want to do. I want to do it too. Whenever. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys think that you pick characters based off of your own personality? Like, is there like a personal connection? Like, do you feel sorry? Yeah. <laughs> did you pick the characters because there was a personal connection? Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah. For, or do you see yourself in them? For for me, like with Camilla, I see a lot of myself. Probably out of any other character in the whole series that I've seen, 
that character is most me. Uh, I would uh, say it's, it was the same for me last year with the Squirtle Squad. Squirt Squirt. Squirt Squirt. Squirtle Squad. Squirt I mean, Squirt. I even thought about that when I gave you guys your assignments for the Scouts. Like, oh right. Yeah. I was thinking about which one fits each of you best. Right. Which is, I was also, yeah. which is why I was Sailor Moon because which I'm is why you so were hungry Serena. Just right. All the time. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> annoying. <laughs> <laughs> hey, speaking of which, does anyone have any food? Him. I'm like super hungry and I forgot my lunch. But yeah, that, hey, that was the big that thing. Philly. <laughs> and honestly, you would have been Thank Mercury, you. so that's perfect. Like it, that's just kind of I, right. I feel like my personal connection. I don't know. For sure, it's uh, it's just easier to to cosplay those characters with that. You, you can relate with you know what i mean fee does that make you worry about characters who cosplay as uh villains no i cosplay no. as villains what are you talking no. about <laughs> i have like yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, Harley Quinn. Great, man. <laughs> she never makes me scared no uh, like you guys probably should be i'm a little tilted well, villains but... are the most interesting let's be <laughs> honest parts. right oh, yeah. I, that's, have... that's actually an interesting take uh, so people who see themselves in villains you're saying they're more honest about sort of like internal conflict within themselves or well i, I think that a a story really is only as good as as its villain i mean truthfully you know, you can have this super cool hero, but if there's not like this great conflict, right, this great thing that's opposing it, it's just going to be boring. And it's a lot more than just like that person kills people. Right. Like, yeah. It's, yeah. it's they, they've got a lot of depth to them and there's more right. characteristics that maybe they relate to. As a dungeon master, this is something I talk about. I think we talked about this the other day where it's like I spend a lot of time crafting these big, bad, evil guys and they have like a really rich backstory. Like it's like, oh, he's not just bad because he wants to kill people. He's bad because when he was a, when he was young, his parents were killed by this raiding party. So from then on, he was never the same. And he and he couldn't he couldn't let any raiders go through his right. town. Right, he's anymore. sacrificing the village people because he's trying to bring back his mom. Duh. Yeah, exactly. He just wants. He's like, I just want my parents back. And it's like, right. and then these adventurers come in and they kill him with the power of friendship. It's like, uh, <laughs> f you, little <laughs> friend boys. Um. I, so one of the signs I saw when I was walking around was the sign that said cosplay is not consent, which I thought That's was really interesting. Yeah. I don't know if like you guys want to talk about that at all, or I mean, yeah. I, it was notable that that it's, sign has to exist. Right. So like, I'm glad that it's there, but I think it's crazy that it needs to be there. You I th- know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's a big thing that started last year. I would say the cosplay is not consent with, kind of came with the up. Me Too thing. Yeah. With right. with the Me Too thing. Um. So I'll I'll give an example. We were in line for the Nintendo. Oh, um, this year? This year. Well, this is a minor no, thing. Go, 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 no, go. no, this is a minor thing. But we were in line for the Nintendo World Record, and we're just standing there. And this guy like comes up, puts his arm ar- like on me, around me, leans right into me, oh. and like asks me what this line is for. And it was really like uncomfortable for me. Like first off, like, I don't know you like personal that. personal bubble. I don't know you like that. I, I told Via like the second he walked away, I'm like, I don't need you to touch me so I can hear you. Like this is Oof, weird. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and we discussed how you know I would have just like punched him if it was really awkward, and then we would have right. been kicked out, and I couldn't have done the recording. But like I, I've had that a lot of times. Like I have taken a picture with a Spider Man at a con. Like that's that used to be my thing. It's like I would always find a Spider Man to take a picture with, and we were at Otacon. And the Spider-Man I wanted to take a picture with, I was also in cosplay. I think I was Sabrina. Sabrina from Pokemon. Yeah. Sabrina from Pokemon. And he like just full on, first picture was fine, had his hand up on my back. But second picture slid it down and just like grabbed my ass. Wow. And it was just like That's... this whole thing of like, that was the first time I've dealt with that. And I was just stunned. Do you, what do you, what do you think that's about? Like, why do you think people think it's okay for them to do that? Well, because that Spider-Man was masked. Yeah, like there's there she wasn't him. Like That's a interesting. Dozen Spider-Men in the area. You right. know what I mean? So it's kind of like hard to pinpoint which one that did it. Right. Because wow, right. that's some really dark Spider-Man. I mean, that's like, right. that's like internet like internet warriors. I yeah. Right. It's uh, kind of what, the what same. Do you mean? Like people that say things on the internet. But can't really oh, because they, they because know they, that there's no repercussions for their actions. Right. Yeah, correct. So like yesterday, I was in something that was quite revealing. Like oh. cleavage was showing. Like I was in underwear. Technically, I had things over that. But like technically, that's what I'm wearing around. And that's what she wears. And I want to be accurate. But the idea of cosplay isn't consent is the idea. I'm not wearing that as a heavily sexualized character in this game. So you can sexualize me. Yeah. That's oh, not that's the cool. idea. 
Like, and that's the whole premise of cosplay isn't consent. And it doesn't give you permission to treat me like you want to treat that character because you want to bang her. <laughs> so that's the big thing. Cosplay is not consent. Yeah. Absolutely. Game more time for the people that's in the back. That is a, that is a real game fact. game <laughs> fact. God. That is just a fact. God damn. God damn. Uh, okay, so maybe Allison and Fee, you guys can help us wrap up this section by telling us about a really positive cosplay experience that you had because I know it does like bring a lot of joy to a lot of people. Yeah. And even I was here last year. So there's this mega huge Snorlax oh, that he's comes so to cute. Magfest. Yeah, and he's like Chocobo this year. And he Chocobo was in our adorable. group, by the way, Who for was? the for the Nintendo, Nintendo thing. thing. Oh, oh how Snorlax um, was? Yeah. The Nintendo yeah. thing. Did, yeah. did they were nine short. They were Jay. nine short. Oh, but we need to describe what this is. <laughs> yeah. So every year at Magfest they try to break a world record in terms of like characters who show up for X. So last year it was like the number of wizards who are in any one place at one time. And this right. year, the record they were trying to break is the number of Nintendo video game characters who are in any one place at any one time. And so... Yeah, so they rejected a lot of people, too, um, which is probably why we... Like, you had to be very like specifically... Sounds like my dating profile. ...the character <laughs> from like the job game. Sounds like my job applications. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they did allow you, though, because, like, you... you they allowed too. me because I was exactly the character in the game, and it was a Nintendo original yeah, game. right. Those mm -hmm. were the stipulations, which made everything really complicated. And Got it. Like so there are like, some people in Super Smash Brothers who are not Nintendo. So there were a bunch of Waluigi's right. who were rejected because they were female, which did not matter. But they wore a skirt, which isn't his mm, outfit. Right. And so like, and I, that's a Guinness rule. Wow. Guinness Book of World Records is very particular. Yeah, and I I had a Snorlax onesie that I was going to wear. Um, Snorlax is a Pokemon. I'm sure everyone knows that. <laughs> but yeah. what? Just making sure. What's up? Um, What's a po Pokemon? Pokemans. Which is, you know, a game that Nintendo makes, but I couldn't just wear the onesie. It, it right. wasn't. Because there are two characters that wear onesies in the game now. And so you could do the ah. Eevee or the Pikachu because in the new one, yeah. those are actual characters kids in the game that run around. Got it. So those are qualified, but normal Pikachu. onesies don't qualify as a costume for right. this. And I, I want to add to that it's a a lot of people were walking away as well like um people who dressed up as super smash bros characters like uh for example joker uh, from persona mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. super mm -hmm. smash Bros. Character. Character. there were exactly. so many of them so many Sonic. Sonic. right Sonic. that's that's what few originally thought he might wanted to do for this and when i asked they they told me no because he's not an original nintendo character wait so, it was solid snake no, Wait, no, no. he doesn't uh, qualify. No, 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 no. But you, who you originally wanted to do was, oh, it no, was no. Uh, Joker. Joker from Joker. Persona. Mm -hmm. That'd be good. That's yeah. a good one. I like that. <laughs> um, that's that's part of the whole like I have glasses. What can I do? Right. Oh, God. <laughs> so so maybe we can yeah talk about a couple of positive cosplay experience or some cosplays that we saw that we liked here at Magfest. I saw a bunch of people running around in. Warhammer 40k cosplays. Yeah, there were a lot of uh, Warhammer Space Marines. I saw a commissar that was really good. Um, I feel like I saw a couple uh, Imperial Guardsmen, but they were. I mean, I. It kind of just reminds me of when I used to play Warhammer 40k a ton back in high school, um, and I always just like. And that game was so face. model based and like tactile yeah. based yeah. and like so much detail. Because yeah. you always had to paint your stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Paint your stuff, yeah. which is really cool. Dan, what about you? Um. Actually, I, I kind of I love seeing like ancillary characters from stuff. Like a lot of people always like you know do like the big character from this, the big character from that. This when we were watching the Triforce Quartet, there was a there was a girl who was dressed as Yuffie from yeah. Final Fantasy VII. Oh, standing nice. right next week. Yes. I wanted to really. I, we were listening to the quartet and they left before I could like say anything. But uh, but I was but I was like, oh, it's a really cool. That's a really good cosplay of Yuffie. I'll, it like cause she didn't have the big stars or anything, but she was dressed really. She had she had one of them. Oh, she did. Yeah. I didn't I didn't see it because I was so I was watching. Random her. fact. Yeah, she was my crush when I was like seven. Oh, oh wow! <laughs> Wait, Yuffie or that girl? Yuffie. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, she was so short. Sure. 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 Not my height, but yeah. Uh, Alex. So besides the power armor, the marine power armor yeah, was, was really cool. or not marine. No, it was the fall the, 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 the one that you took a yeah yeah space fall yeah yeah. Uh, that was incredible. Uh, but <laughs> when we were waiting for the room, <laughs> I'm sitting on the luggage by myself and you guys were running around doing other things. And this person walked past me as a Christmas tree. <laughs> and and, and a, a police officer came over to me and was like, what is that supposed to be? 
<laughs> and you were like, I, and no I was idea. like, well, this is MAGFest. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then just a, a side note, not really a cosplay, but I got confused for Keith from the Try Guys. Oh, I can oh, yeah. see it. Wow. So yeah. That's true. So you what were cosplaying compliment. Keith from the Try Guys. <laughs> I was cosplaying Keith from the Try Guys. Apparently. I was at a bar a couple of weeks ago, and one of the people sitting next to me thought I was one of the guys from Rooster Teeth. Oh, which is kind of interesting. interesting. You do look a little Jack like. Yeah. So I do want to point out the person. I, uh, Magfest is very overwhelming. It is yes. the, uh, the stimulus. There's a lot of sensory overload. There's sensory overload is is real. It's, real. it's loud. And, it's and bright. The it's... person that confused me for Keith from the Try Guys actually is a listener of ours. I can't remember her name. Sensory oh. overload. Oh can't God. remember. Like here? Yeah, she's here, and she came into the the live stream that what? we did. Thank and so you, mystery I'm so person. Who's mystery here? person. You didn't get a I'm name? so sorry. How did you not get sensory a name? overload? She, not she, he, he couldn't remember. Oh. Just I, because, it's like whenever you had a concussion. Yeah, it's like that, but over these two days with yes. bright flashing lights. <laughs> oh, I wish. Which is I not what you yeah. so I, I, give her a I apologize and thank you <laughs> for yeah, listening. Thank you. I my favorite cosplay was Snorlax. And it was last yeah. year too. Big. And he was in, like I said, he was in our our group for the world record. So we got to hang out. He with was him. like the, the but big he was Snorlax. also like in my way, so I couldn't see anything on the stage. He <laughs> I was mean, just, that's pretty classic Snorlax, right? But he was also up there dancing the whole time, so I didn't give a shit because like yeah, so cute, <laughs> it's so, so cute. cute, so cute. I just want to cuddle him and like oh. have him fall down and sleep on him. <laughs> that's weird. Uh, <laughs> Sixty nine. <laughs> Unless he's listening. Cosplay, Allison's phone Not number is five five five. Um. Yeah, exactly. That's why I didn't. See? I know what I should not do. Sometimes things you want to do, you shouldn't do. <laughs> exactly. What? That's what you need to realize. Self-control. Um, but like my fa- favorite thing about the cosplay experience this year was um, meeting the cosplayers who are also doing Fire Emblem when we were doing it for and sure. asking for pictures and like getting those. Um, I know there was a guy who was doing Claude Vaughn something. Yeah, uh, he's uh, Golden Lions. Yeah, from, uh, I can't houses. remember the last yeah, name. Yeah. Um, but he, uh, he he was really great. He was so nice. Yeah. And uh, we saw him like twice and he was in a casual cosplay afterwards of it. And <laughs> like it, he sent me a picture on Instagram that he took of us and like stuff like that. It was just like those kinds of people. Like I said, you find your people who like a game as much as you do. And that's really cool. Like nice, nice yeah. community. Um, for me, I, I want to say it was the Samus Aran from oh. uh, our, our, the same uh, blah, the same Nintendo group. Actually, it's uh, it was insane. It was like it was really accurate. Good. You can tell that this this person really put in a lot of work, and uh, the the detail was just like perfect. Like the um, the pauldrons had lights in them. The oh. uh, yeah, the helmet had this green glow That's for the cool. the visor. Oh. And everything, like they went all out. You can tell that they spent like I don't know, maybe all so year doing this, doing as yeah. opposed to the the zero suit Samuses who just get right. Yeah, <laughs> let me just buy the body suit. Zero and I mean, Samus. there's nothing Here's wrong with that. That's what I was gonna say. It's like right. you, no, think no, about, yeah. you think about the work that goes into like somebody who's doing like a D three barbarian cosplay, and they have to get like fucking ripped. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. but, oh, yeah, yeah, it's just a loincloth and an axe, but yeah. like they put some work. Dude, oh, absolutely, also Kratos. Yeah, yeah, also Kratos. Boy. Yeah, so there's Boy. there's something to be said for all the cosplays, but the yeah. like after doing this, knowing personally the amount of work that went into that Samus suit, yeah, I appreciate it Jeez. so sure. much. That's probably my second favorite cosplay after looking at it. And I don't even know how to mess with LEDs, and so that's a whole new game. When I saw that on hers, that I was just like, oh my gosh. Here we go next year. Yeah, right. Next year, something with LEDs. All right, well that's gonna be it for us in the first half. When we come back, we're gonna do a little bit of a game brew retrospective and answer questions from our adoring public on the discord we love you from on the yes. discord how do you get to that discord Ian? how do you get to that discord it's a uh, bit.ly slash disco brew yeah, that's, that's how you get there yeah d-i-s-c-o like where you go to dance and then brew, brew b-r-e-w d-i-s-c-o-b-r-e-w also disclaimer just, we do dance often there. we do yeah. uh, there's also a lot of bad singing there's there's lots of fun and there's a, lots of bad singing on the podcast and occasional <laughs> sail, sailor moon like Fashion fest oh for no God. particular that reason. Happened. There was like we a good the like hole. fifty post thing where we were talking about how so fire fun. the fashion is. Well, that's when we were explaining to you guys yeah. what Sailor Moon was, and then you looked up things and are like, "Wow, look at this." Which, if you want to dress like a pre- like a like a nice looking preppy guy, go watch Sailor Moon for a little yeah, while. Mm-hmm. We'll go. All right, stick with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. 
back to the second half of the Game Brew Podcast, episode 69. Six, Finger, six, guns. Nine. Finger guns. Finger guns. Finger guns. Uh, how's the Natty Bow sitting with us? It is. Crisp sitting, and delicious. Crisp, right, crisp and delicious. Delicious. Crisp. Crisp. That would be a weird name for a elf that gives you cookies. Crisp and, crisp delici- and delicious. Crisp That's and delicious. Name. Yeah. An elf who gives me cookies. His <laughs> name is... My name is Crispin Delicious. It's almost as good as Topper Bottoms. Topper Bottoms. Topper Bottoms. Topper bottoms. <laughs> I did a salute. You can't see it because it's not a visual medium. <laughs> um, uh, so we're here at MagVest doing uh-huh. mag things. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Mag stuff. Enjoying ourselves. Yep. Uh, we have been playing a lot of games. Some. What other games have we played since we've been here that were either nostalgic like there's a museum or in the arcade or indie stuff that you want to shout out i mean it wasn't nostalgic because it was the first time i played it but there's this game i think it's part of the tokyo attack arcade group that's here mm-hmm. called tank 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 tank, oh, tank, 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 tank was tank, great tank. and yeah. it's a lot of fun because you're just driving a tank and you have a, a go button and a backwards button to to drive with and then you can just shoot your tank. But when you shoot, it kind of kicks you back in your chair every time. Yeah, so the, the chair is mechanical. So when the cannon it's fires, like tactical feed, it, yeah, tactile it, feedback. it replicates a recoil feel and pushes the chair back real fast. It's great. That's amazing. Cool. Unless your your pedals don't work and so your tank is just, just always going, going forward. <laughs> <laughs> like always straight. Tank. Listen, always Alex. straight. <laughs> That's my luck right there. Yeah, that was my tank. Yeah, tank, tank, tank was fun. Uh, we I also played a Tyco rhythm game where there was an actual, uh, not an actual, but an Will actual fake Tyco game in front of me. Oh yeah, the Will Tycho Tycho had talked about the Tycho drum before. Uh, I think previously. Yeah, it was it was fun. Yeah, like I l- actually love the rhythm games that have funky controller schemes and setups. Yeah, Did you check out Groove Coaster? What was Groove Coaster? You basically like it's you're basically touching the back of a, a speaker, and so you can either hit the buttons or move it directions. Oh, based on, on how it goes on the screen, it's kind of cool. That's I played cool. it last night. No, I didn't play that, but I did play the one. I don't know what it's called. But it's a rhythm game that's basically shaped like a washing machine, and there are buttons around the outside of what would be the door at like noon and one thirty and three and yeah. The, yeah. we we have affectionately called it the washing machine rhythm game. Yeah, and and so like you can you have to hit those buttons in rhythm obviously, but then there's also like sliders in the middle that either cross through or come around, so you have huh. to like hit the button, slide the screen, go back to the other button. It's nuts. Yeah. It was Especially it was really fun. At the higher levels, it's crazy because whenever you do like two at the same time, they're like sometimes they're really far apart, so you're just like trying to go like huh. Uh, again, it's a th- audio medium, but so, my hands are really yes. far apart in different directions. My hands are really far apart in different directions. <laughs> my hands are really far apart in different directions. But it's, yeah. but it's really cool. Uh, if you haven't played it, go do it. It's nuts. I like it. Absolutely. Initial D. Initial D. Initial D. D. It's, uh, Is that the driving game? Yeah, it's driving. It's drifting. Mm-hmm. Um, I played that a lot when I was younger, so I was really happy to see it here. Uh, and I think there's like four seats downstairs mm-hmm. in the oh, arcade. Yeah. So that that's real fun. You get to drift in Japan. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't really have much to add yet um, because I've really been heavy on. We've been running around doing cosplay and stuff. We ha- haven't played many games. Um, I'm really happy to see that in the indie area, Blood's back because I was. R- I really loved that last year, and I actually mentioned that as as the one I was excited about. Nice. Um, and I saw that they were back when we were kind of wandering around today. Um, so I'm hoping to go back when it's less busy <laughs> and kind of uh, dig a little more into it and see what's going on with them. But it's I think my favorite thing this year was seeing indie stuff I saw last year and where they are now. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. That was really cool to kind of see that movement um, because that's something I'm really interested in in the yeah, process. That's, of. that's really motivational, inspirational. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. I got into uh, the dome screen dogfight mock storm. Oh, what? Yeah. That's a lot of oh, yeah. that's Play a lot of nouns you just said there. <laughs> I'm sorry. Can you repeat more that time. five times fast? Yes. Uh, dome screen. Dome screen. Dog, dog fight. Mock storm. Dome screen. Dog fight. Mock storm. Dome screen. 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 Mock If the mandatory yeah. fund commissioner were here, he would be very upset. Uh. I am over here, you piece of shit. <laughs> Stay in the bathroom, you cock. <laughs> You you sit in like a fighter jet chair, and the screen is 180 degrees from your shoulders in front of you, like all the way around and all the way up to the ceiling and down. So playing for like the 90 second game is like after that you have a headache. But it's it was cool, and uh, I got top 10 last night, which was cool. What? Ian got top 12. Yep, top 12. So yeah, yep. 
Damn. So that was that was Setting a fun up game. Some high scores. Yeah, I went to go play the the them's fighting herds. Them's fighting herds, which was kind of interesting. I have I have a this so thing it's, that has a, it's like it's like a fighting game, but it's like, but it's kind of really cute. Uh, My Little Pony esque sort of characters. So there's like a llama that's really right. kind of derpy, and there's... all their names are like Twinkle yeah. and Sparkle. Yeah, and... and they're like really cutesy. But it's actually a surprisingly well thought out fighting game. I, I was, I was, me and uh, uh, me and uh, Katie were playing a little bit of it, and she uh, she kept kicking my butt. Uh, but uh, I'm terrible at fighting games, and she's really good at them. I guess. I don't know. Yeah, she's pretty good at them. Yeah, she's pretty good. <laughs> so. At them, so. Yeah, because Magfest, because we have so many of the uh, game brew people in the room, those of us who founded the podcast and helped to keep moving it forward in really beautiful and wonderful ways, that's Allison. Um, We wanted to take a second to do a little bit of a game brew retrospective. And so uh, I wanted to ask the question to all of you all and just ask, what is it? about this podcast that brings you back because every week we have to do a thing and sometimes it's a lot of stuff so like it can be a lot of work so like why do it i guess what's your what are you in it for Uh, i don't know i'm here for the beer (laughs) (laughs) i'm here for the beer chris is here for the beer (laughs) i'm not really sure i came for the women but then i found out it was all dudes until allison showed up so (laughs) um I mean, for me, it's it's just really a great way to keep up with a lot of really good friends that I otherwise wouldn't get to see or talk to. Like, I mean, I yeah, we would play video games together too, but also it like you are forced to, to hang out with me now. <laughs> <laughs> I have to hang out with you on a schedule. It's like it's, exactly. it's required. That one time we had to hang out for twenty four hours straight was oh the my worst. God, that was brutal. Um, it was. I liked it. It was well, so <laughs> no, it was so much fun. Let's do it again next year. Can I can I talk about like the inception of kind of the Game Brew yeah, podcast? Yeah, that's where a I was going bit? next. But. Yeah, because because it's like we started it or you started it because you Ian approached yes. me about it or maybe Will did I think because I didn't because uh, you and I hadn't spoken for a long time. Really? Not because yeah, not because we didn't like each just other. It was just because just life. You know, it takes yeah, a different section. Sure. So, but Will Shell sent me a message and was just like, or it might have been you. I don't remember exactly. I think it kind of was Will because he was doing like a business thing for a hot second. Well, yeah. and like we kind of, well, I, I think it was mostly you and Will talking about it. And then yeah. I was like, oh, hey, this would be awesome. Oh, by the way, can I also do this? With you? <laughs> yeah. but, but, but it also started more also as a as like, just a we, group. Uh, we, yeah, we had talked about doing like a book club, but yeah. video games. Yeah, and that right. was called the game club, where it was like we would play a video game for like a week or a month, and then and talk then about talk it about while it we were doing our while knitting. we were doing it. Yes, Chris had just built my PC for me. That's true. Well, and, and, so, and Ian had just built a PC. Yeah, Ian had just built a. PC. And I had just built mine too because I waited to buy Overwatch until I had a PC that could run it. So yeah. I hadn't played games in a really long time. So when when you built my PC, it gave me a chance to reconnect with dan and with ian and will who i hadn't seen since college graduating in 2010 so yeah it's a good way to reconnect that's kind of the thing that like was cool that like is cool to me is because i consider us all like i hope you consider us too but i consider you all my like best friends i tell everyone every oh i didn't consider you friends at all i consider you family Oh, I just consider you colleagues. Shut up, man. You're Y'all are just colleagues. <laughs> a lot of fucking podcast. Don't make me cry. <laughs> Associates. They can't see you, Dan. They can't see you. They can't see you cry. not crying. It's just raining on my face. Um, the, uh, but, the Game Brew family. Well, but, what's, what's funny for me is I, I wasn't there at the start, obviously, but Will actually, um, we were like super tight back when um, he worked at Best Buy. We, we were like besties at work. Twice. And... Um, he told me that you guys were doing this and asked me to listen to the first episode after you <laughs> oh, recorded. God. Oh, and it doesn't exist. Opinion. It doesn't exist. There is no Do first episode. Do not ask us to listen to episode one. If you give us a crap ton of money for no reason we'll let you we'll listen do a to episode stupid one. hashtag stupid crowdfunding for episode 001 release if you want to hear something bad if you want to listen i'll set a patreon goal like that whenever because by this point we're gonna have our patreon set up in any so, case yeah yeah and, and and that's kind of it like he sent it to me and he was like hey what do you think about this i want honest feedback and first off i give honest feedback no she matter can't, what can't can confirm can confirm <laughs> can confirm 
confirm Can whether confirm. you want it or not, it's coming. Um, that's just me. I'm not a bullshitter. So when he sent it to me, I was trying to decide if I should even really respond because there was so much good with it, but there was lots of things I felt needed to change to make it listenable. Well, so what? I'm actually curious. What I, I don't fully remember, and you'll have to forgive me because I've had a concussion. Like, <laughs> that's true. Are you okay? She was like, I really no, thought I'm that blue now, tiger ish. that was in there was really weird, and so, I don't know why. I remember doing it. I remember like not fully the episode is the thing. I don't remember exactly anything about it. And that's sad because you guys don't want it to be known. So I wish I knew (laughs) it. Um, But I do, I do remember sending him like a list of things that I felt like the idea of the show was really good. I liked all of the people. I thought that some people I, I felt, I don't even remember should be giving more input than others. I remember saying Chris's voice was the smoothest voice I had <laughs> yes, ever I remember heard. this too. Yes, I remember and that too. That maintains to this. <laughs> and I was like, you know, that makes me feel real good. Yeah, and I was like, real I literally good. sent um, sent Will a message saying, if Chris could just read bedtime stories and send them to me, it would probably help me go to sleep. Another Patreon. Um, that we can see. <laughs> Like that one <laughs> good night story I did yeah. last yeah, year and that's, for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> that's before I knew Chris at all, so I had no sure. idea. But um, but it was very like Morgan Freeman all. voice in my head, like a very like yeah. could go with anything. Well, and that's one of the things that I think you you really bring to the group, and one of the reasons that we wanted to bring you on to a the sharp, show. A shrill voice to counterbalance. What? No, what? <laughs> <laughs> no. What I was gonna say is you have really you have strong opinions that you articulate well. That I don't want to say they aren't influenced by other people's opinions, but you you have uh, a strong I don't want to say will, but you have a strong will, and you don't necessarily always agree. And a lot sure. of times that's really helpful because we yeah. don't yeah I want think to I, I wonder if because page. we played so much together and and went to school together that we have a little bit of a hive mind where we agree on a lot of the we things. We do not. <laughs> Dan not. said making direct eye contact with Ian. <laughs> but like, I, I feel like sometimes like that some, happens. There are some things that we really agree on and there are some things that we don't. Um, I do want to interrupt real quick because we do have some viewer questions that we need to or listener questions yeah, that we so, should okay. get to. So the way this is going to work is we'll do a little bit of history, which we've just done, and then we're going to do some questions. So yeah. it's question time. So I'm time. just going to interrupt every once in a while and just say, hey. You know what I've always wondered? You know what Pips always wondered? Uh, Carrie, our good, good friend, friend of Carrie. the podcast. Our good friend of the podcast, Creator Carrie. Creator of mugs and, and crafter pickle of, juices. Yeah. Crafter pickle, of pickle mugs. Juices. Master crafts person. Master craftswoman yes. of mugs. And uh, she asks, would we consider doing a live one-hour video podcast on Twitch or other streaming platform in the near future? We would consider it. We would give, like, consider it. <laughs> we would strongly consider it. I mean, I, I know she's saying that because we, we did one. We did, well, we did the 24-hour live stream. Yeah. Correct. Which was we did a I think, thing. So the thing about this is we would love to do it. We are, in because we are musicians and because Allison has a musician's sense of perfectionism, wow. we are hesitant to display what it's actually like to be in the room with us because it's not perfect. And when we release the podcast, we really do like we edit and we take out all the bumps and the bonks. And like, if there's an awkward pause or a cough or a sneeze or an unintentionally very <laughs> off color. Yeah. <laughs> comment. So, so the thing is that we, what we want to try to do is release the highest quality content to you. And we're very passionate about that. And so doing something live, we all feel like, like, yeah, we could, but we really would need to prepare. But, but I also, think that's also part of the charm. You right. know? Is that yeah. there's risk involved? Well, I mean, to, the, the the audience would kind of see what we're really like, right? Sure. Oh, man. But will we have to wear pants? That's the question. That's the, no, no, no. They still only see from here up like we do what, when we Discord and Allison doesn't wear pants. pants. Oh, that's right. Listen, if I don't have to wear pants. Just go. Don't go I'm pee. In. All right. Okay, cool. Never so pee, maybe that's, that's another up. thing. Man, we're just uh, racking up some Patreon goals that we yeah. can set okay. here for the next. So yeah, yeah. In the future, we'd like to. We just yes. have to we'd, kind of bounce the idea. More. And we definitely want to do more streaming. It's another totally. thing. Totally. Absolutely. Which you will probably see this year a whole lot. So. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to be a whole lot, but more More, than more than than once a year. (laughs) We're going to get there. (laughs) It will be more than once. (laughs) All right, Dan, give us another question. Another question? Okay. I wasn't ready for that one. uh, I cried a little bit earlier, so let's talk about this one that uh, (laughs) comes from Dante Destiny from our Discord, which if you're not a member of it, you can go to bit.ly slash discobrew, D-I-S-C-O-B-R-E-W. That's our good buddy Mike Held from college. Mike Held also went to uh, the college we all went to. He's a hero. He is a hero. He has a kid. He's a kid. Fuck. He's a kid. That happens to people. Yeah, I know. 
for. And that's, some people are okay with it. That's good. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. Not my um, thing, but, but good for you. But he, but he asked, what's the first game that you full on cried at? I don't know what the first, I mean, I like my, my stock answer for this is final fantasy seven, but I think one of the ones that caught me really off guard in a great way recently was Florence and was talking about this. Really? Oh my God. That was a hard hit. I was sitting in the bathroom playing, sitting in the bathtub playing Florence. You were were thinking about about my life choices. Holy shit. That game is a a hard hit. So he went to the bathroom, sat down. No. Yeah. I, I, sometimes I have tub time just to like rejuvenate myself. Wow. And, uh, do you do bath bombs? That's where I where do I do feel bombs? the things. Do do I don't bombs? I don't do bath bombs. You should bombs, do bath bombs. But I do do like the little tea the tea can the tea candles nice. little. Oh, little can you, you should the, do bath bombs when you I do a bath, bath bombs. bombs. Katie loves bath Please bombs. put it on Instagram. Everyone Hello and welcome to the it. bath bomb podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your host <laughs> Ian Bubbles Richard. <laughs> but no, yeah, Florence. If Mr. you want to check out a really Mr. fantastic Bubbles. story based uh, story based, but no reading. Uh, mobile game like it's good. could not could not recommend Florence enough and it's that's I th- believe it's an Annapurna title too it is what was that Cry game that was a <sighs> to the moon to the moon oh, this is that's to the moon what said, slapped too. I mean, that, I can't think of the first game that made me cry, but that was the one that made me cry most recently. And like, I'm not much of a cry. Like, I'll have like a hmm hmm yeah. moment. I I clutched my chest and and. Yeah, because this is audio, yep. audio medium. Yeah, but a lot of the times I will not cry like in a movie or in a uh, during a video game. But because I'm a man, and man don't have man don't, man don't have emotions. Yes, we do. <laughs> <So many emotions. laughs> but that one just really got me. Just like thinking, it makes you really think about your entire life because you're basically going backwards through this person's life to the point where the the focal point of where his life changed. He he mm-hmm. changed his path. I see, and that just really made me think about my choices and my different paths that I could have taken choices. Oof. Alex, was it when you uh, lost the Tony Hawk tournament just now? <laughs> <laughs> that, that it did make me cry a little bit. We had to hug no, it out. So another time, another sports game that made me cry yeah. because I could never beat my brother was <laughs> NFL blitz. <laughs> <laughs> and my parents actually took our PlayStation away from us because <laughs> I got so mad at my brother because Bri he, crushed you every time. He would crush me every <laughs> that's time. That's hilarious. I didn't know Bri was so good. At I think blitz. I threw the controller at him, <laughs> and that's what led to the. the that's amazing. PlayStation. I did not know that about him. Dan, there was something that I played recently that really got me. And I can't remember what it was. You really got me. It really got you me. You got me now. It was it really, one of the games you completed? You got me I don't know, I don't know if it was a one. game I completed. Because I remember, like, it might have been God of War. Like, when I was playing God Man, of War. Like, six years ago, I would have been like, Dan, you got issues. But now I'm like, that makes a lot of <laughs> no, sense. That game's changed so much. Because there was, like, it, it was yeah. something that I wasn't prepared for, too. Like, it made me just react emotionally. And I just was not set up for it, you know? Like I was just, I was, I just, whenever, especially God of War, because it's like the whole game is about, yeah, I think it was God of War because it was like the whole game's like, all right, I'm building my combos, trying to get better. Also, there's this boy who's around me, probably boy. my son, whatever, you know, I'm just kind of doing the thing. And then there's like all this stuff that happens. I don't want to spoil it. Dark. It gets pretty dark, but then also it like builds up Kratos as a Kratos actual, has emotions. Like he's a person. He's and not like, just a rage monster. Yeah, he's not just a giant. You, uh, can I ask, and if this hits too hard, that's okay. Do you feel like you especially identify because you also have a boy? Of, no. Sorry. Well, I was going to say. <laughs> have rage issues? Not, no, no, no. Also not what I was going to say. I was going to say because you tend to be a little bit of a bottler, though. Like you just like whatever you're feeling, we don't. I don't even as a close friend usually see those things. That's true. Um, there are no. I do tend to bottle things up pretty easily. Yesterday, whenever uh, the Dairy String Quartet, they were playing like Kylo Ren's theme from oh. Star Wars. Yet another character who it seems like you identify with. I do. I, I, I identify with his emotions because it, because it's like it's so. Please don't kill your dad. I'm. Not, I'm very fond I will of not. him. We we at the Game Room Podcast love Brian. That's he is true. Great. Both Kratos and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what's his face? Ben, Ren. ben killed his dad. Yeah. yeah, it's just like because the emotion, like 
you can feel it. And this is also a tribute to John Williams as a composer because right, he, you're like, wandering pretty far off I'm this sorry. topic here, pal. <laughs> basically, basically, I bottle up my emotions. Walk the path. Uh, ben Solo, like, it just refuses to acknowledge things, and I think that that hits me pretty hard. Yeah. So, like, whenever something like hits me, I'm not ready for it, so I cry sure. immediately. <laughs> oh, you that's should, really sweet. It, it is. You should watch. You you cannot. I cannot watch Field of Dreams like I'm with other people. <laughs> it just doesn't work. I mean, my. <laughs> Here's a Brian Rotz back for Field you. Field of Dreams. Yo, there's the first time me and my dad watched Field of Dreams together. It was literally us sitting there, and then like we watched the end of it. I look at him, we're both tearing up. I'm like, you want to go play catch? <laughs> oh my god. That was like me with a Lego movie. Oh god. All right, so the Lego movie. I did All right. not expect. All right. Sorry, Allison. Yeah. Weepy games. What makes you cry? What I didn't want to go. <laughs> Why not? No, you go. You because go I feel like this is too telling of me. I Why? don't cry. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Can we clarify? You've never cried. Well, no, no, no. no I, I've, I've, I've cried. When she had an so, like, when she once was a, a year, okay. I will have an absolute <laughs> fucking meltdown cry fest. Is this something that you plan or something that yeah, happens? No, like, it's just it happens like, for okay, no December reason. December 5th is cry day. Okay. For no Friday, reason. It'll be a nothing <laughs> no, that nice. sets me off. And it makes no sense to my day. My day's fine. Um, but I, I don't cry at movies. I don't cry at On video Fridays, games. I don't cry. cry because music is beautiful. Oh, interesting. I don't. I mean, I don't there's no pressure cry. to cry because of this. No, it's but I, I think to. it's very odd. And there are games I feel and like I feel the emotion of it. Sure, but I, I don't. I don't know. I'm you've weird. never you've never cried because of a video game. I, I've never cried because of a lot of things <laughs> that I should be crying at. So, well, so it's okay. So that makes a lot of me. sense. I compart- compartmentalize, I guess. I cry um, enough for you, well, Allison. Let's see. I, I, I haven't cried with a video enough. game, but uh, the one that hit me in the feels is uh, right the probably Dragon Quest Seven. Oh, okay. Not so yeah. that's an old school one from yeah, PlayStation one, one. Yeah. Um, it's uh, for those who haven't played it. I don't want to spell too much, but it's basically your. It's pretty old. I'm pretty sure it's okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So like, <laughs> you're, 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 so you're, you're you're this character in this like fishing village, and your dad goes out to sea oh, every no. year to, to get to, a like, pack of cigarettes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> cigarettes. Right. Um, to find other people and other yeah. continents, and he fails every year until you and your buddies stumble upon a uh, kind of like this cave, and you assemble these puzzle pieces that become you know, these islands or continents in the world. Interesting. And you go back in time and you write history. So... God, the Dragon Quest games. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> so, so crazy. Yeah, so then when you return to the present, you know, your dad finds out, like, these islands and continents. Like, hey, this is... What happened here? And you're like, whoa, dad, crazy you found that. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Didn't know but, that um, was there. There was a lot of really big character developments because, like, with a game like this, you really get attached to the characters. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then, you know, a, a lot of things happen. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> okay, so one of the other things that I wanted to do uh, was talk about Allison joining the podcast because that was, like, a big... It was a big moment, I think, for us because we were here. all... <laughs> no, we were... It was we, a turning point. We all had a... Um, we all had a connection outside of the podcast that was really strong and we From wanted playing to playing the tuba. Yeah, and we wanted to have <laughs> another different voice with a sort of a different background or different set of experiences during the podcast. And, you know, Will and Dan knew this person, Allison, and so we were like, yeah, we'll do like a little audition episode and see how it goes. Hopefully and if it she goes doesn't well, suck, we can kind of like... ask her to come back. Um, so what it, I want to know like what that felt like from the outside did you know that you were did being you know like, it was auditioned? Audition? Like, or like... Did you know we were testing? No, no. So here's the thing. Will was like, hey, look. This this awesome dude we have, <laughs> Alex. He has to take a hiatus for a minute. Can right. you come he, he in? He's going to he's going to boot camp. Because yeah, you were going to boot camp, and there and he, he literally asked Alex me, is nodding thoughtfully. Can you <laughs> sit in on an episode? Yeah, that was what he said to me, yeah. and I was like, I don't think so. Thank you. Like I literally was like, no, this is terrifying. What you said no? I didn't said no. It, did I harass you into doing it a uh, little bit? I I. I, I concussion i don't remember if it was you or will who were just like no it's going to be fine and so i like i wrestled with it for a while really what um, was it what was it that gave you pause uh, my social anxiety oh, like interesting um the thought of my voice on recording being out there for other people to listen to for terrified me yeah forever <laughs> forever like i didn't think a anyone would want to listen to me talk about anything 
I have a lot of strong opinions, but they're not often opinions people agree with. Agree with. I'm not I'm not part of an echo chamber. So I feel right. like it's it's a negative in a lot of ways because I am very opinionated and I am very logical to a fault and like things like that. I'm very Vulcan. So I didn't feel like <laughs> a I would mesh with a bunch of people I didn't know very well. Um, that was a little terrifying for was me. It, did you did you feel like that was a quick transition or did you kind of have to like ease into it? Did you do research? Well, no, it was really weird. I had, listened <laughs> to, I had listened to the podcast before. Yeah. Um, like I said, I even heard the first episode before it even aired because Will asked me questions about it. So, it, and I knew Dan from like a couple times. Will brought him to drink Finger with us guns. <laughs> guns. back in the day. Episode yeah. sixty nine. Wait, what does that mean? <laughs> um, and so, like, I just I felt really terrified to talk with a bunch of people I didn't know. Um, and I actually talked to Carrie about it before I ever hey, came hey. on. Friend of the podcast. Yeah, and she's the one who's, who ultimately talked me into it, to be honest. Good. Thank you, so Carrie. if we ever need you to do something and you don't want to, we just we need just to talk, talk to Carrie. Carrie. Right, because <laughs> she understands like my issues really well because she's similar. Carrie's so great. She's like, look, rationally, it's not that big of a deal. You're going to be fine. Do this. Act like you're just talking to a bunch of people in a room. Like that are your friends it's going to be okay Mm -hmm. that was literally her advice to me and that was the thing i was like you're right i'm overthinking it like screw it it's an episode let's just do it so i came on and did that and i honestly never thought (laughs) i would come back (laughs) i literally the way will asked me i thought i was doing an episode and then alex was coming back (laughs) yes needed well i I think we purposely like i think we purposely (laughs) underplayed it a little bit to like because you don't want to say to someone like come be on our podcast and then have them be on the podcast you're like oh maybe don't be on our podcast podcast except for fee who can be on because he brings us coffee right (laughs) yay also i'm gonna need some more coffee so just go and by Um, coffee you mean beer beer (laughs) so cream's no sugar right yes no, but I, lots of sugar. I like my coffee. But like there coffee. is there is this element of our podcast, which you've probably noticed, where there's like this rotating sort of group of characters. Like yeah. Right now, Alex is back because he's, you know, here and being amazing. And that's and fantastic. we're forcing him to now. Right. But we're Basically. not all always. I was gone for a couple of weeks at some point. Oh, yeah. Will, whenever I was doing the pod, I was the host of the podcast, yeah. mm-hmm. which was terrifying which i understand <laughs> <did great. laughs> i need to go back and listen to those episodes those episodes are i've listened to those episodes just to do some game brew facts like stuff yeah earlier and that was oh god i was like there oh my go. god i hate me so much <laughs> <laughs> welcome to hosting <laughs> um and up uh, like will now has been on a little bit of a hiatus for a while but uh i think it's interesting or i think it's cool that the character of the podcast sort of maintains. It's, it's a collective, grows. yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah. It's one. It's it's. I, I think I like to think about it as like a motorcycle club. It's like once you join the family, you're in it until you're dead. Otherwise, <laughs> you don't really have a you don't really have a choice in the matter. It's kind of like the. Where's my leather too. jacket, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> it's in the mail. It's in the mail. Okay. All right. So it's, it's going to be there. Though. It's, it's going to be there forever. Man. It's U.S. Postal Service. It's going to take a few weeks. So speaking of the Game Brew Podcast family, we're going to take a couple more questions yes. from our family we of listeners. Are uh, so that was a go. solid transition. Thanks, man. Every once in a year, I get one right. <laughs> There's a couple. I want to point out there, like some of the questions that you submitted to. Our stuff are really good, and I don't want to use them now, just because they're, they're probably going to be topics. They're later. probably going to be topics in there, so shout out to those people eventually whenever we do this. But one of the ones we're going to do now, um, let's do a Katie question. <clears throat> uh, this is from Katie, Alto Clef Avenger. My fiance. Congratulations Ooh. to Chris as well. Oh who, yeah, <laughs> congratulations he, uh, to both of them. To the question. Yeah. After, <laughs> Which I understand was like you had to like basically like annoy her into being paying attention to you. To, well, yeah. So like it was it happened on New Year's and she, I, like we kissed and we're like, yay, New Year's. And then like I was getting the ring. And while I was doing that, she turned to Ian, who was next to her. And I was you like, my job disguising and they were like the talking. Ring. And apparently Ian was like kind of like trying to like nudge her, like kind of Direct motion her back, the right back to me while I was getting down on my, my knee. So I was just like, Katie. And she was like. She turned around and was like flustered for a second, but it was, she said yes. So that's good. Yay. That Congratulations. All right. Uh, so this Here is the question she says. Uh, she says, what is your gaming character crush? And if you don't have any, Ooh, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. like a fictional character, if it's not a gaming character. So I'm going to take this one first because. No, I want to go first. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Tifa Lockhart. 
Yeah. 100% would take a bullet for What's But she for? wouldn't need me to because she's way tougher than me. Yeah. She, she would have <laughs> kicked sure. your butt easy. She, I'm uh, in on that. She's strong, but she's also like emotionally available. Like she has talks with Cloud. And that's like, that's a, you don't get that combination all the time. Yeah. That's solid. Also, Kung Fu. I literally said she was best girl to Fee earlier. <laughs> best girl? Yeah, would, best girl. In that, would, in that game, best girl. Yeah. Uh, yes. I would agree on the like status that like Yuffie is kind of annoying sometimes. Yeah, she annoys me. So that's that's why and Aerith is kind of and Aerith Aerith, dead. We all is know dead. My so, opinion. On so her. she doesn't also, exist anymore. So, um, well, I don't know. Genova's pretty cool in that one. I Ew. Think. <laughs> <laughs> um, give me a beer. All right, Chris. Um, so as a young lad playing Mass Effect, I really enjoyed I Miranda. Miranda. Wait, oh. <laughs> Mass Effect Two. <laughs> yes. But as I grew older, when I started playing Mass Effect 3, I realized the person I really liked was Liara Tissonis. Because not only is she attractive, but also she's very smart. She's very passionate about her um, what she does. She's very into history of mm-hmm. alien artifacts. That's true. Oh, right. Yeah. And, true, yeah. And so, like, I really, I don't, I. You like somebody who's passionate about something. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So that I, thing I is really. Old books. <laughs> I really liked that blue alien. <laughs> she's, a, she's a great blue alien. Righteous gaming crush. Laura Croft. Oh, oh. That's a classic. Oh. classic. Yeah, yeah, that is a classic. Throwback. He's he's just into really sharp individuals. Yeah. Is it the accent? I like the eight bit Laura Croft. Oh, okay. So like. not not like Angelina Jolie. How do you feel about the triangles? Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. triangles. Yeah. No, I actually so triangles I, turn me on too. Laura Croft is <laughs> really interesting, especially the evolution of Laura Croft. Because now it's like well, she was a like a very simple sex object. She was a yeah. very simple sex object early on. She was a sex a symbol, pretty much. Character and she, was, yes. she, she was is. like she was Absolutely. like one of the original but gaming sex symbols. She beat the crap out of some bears. Yeah, and, totally. and, and a T Rex. Like she yes, and a T Rex. Yep. Like she is a badass character. And she is and somehow, fearless. She is somehow found bullets in a temple. Yeah, amazing. Now it's like. Oh, the new two actual yeah. real life badass female, not just an over sexualized sex symbol, but a strong independent woman. Yeah, the newer Lara Croft's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, for for sure, I can identify with like playing games a long time ago when I saw Lara, Laura, whatever Croft. Mm-hmm. I was like, hey, a hot chick with some boobs. Cool. I I feel like I'm in a game somehow, and like this is kind of my character a little bit. That's and she gets yeah. to like shoot these guns, but like obviously her character wasn't developed back then. Sure. Like he said. Yeah. yeah. And uh, now it's something more where she's intelligent and she's more Indiana Jonesy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. with tits. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for that. Like, uh, but and, not overemphasized. So yeah, yeah. Like back then, I even went. Thank you for this. Even though she was just totally a sex object character. Well, because back then there wasn't really any female main characters in games. That's yeah, true. It's true. There yeah. And that's lot. why I was so happy. Samus hyped. was around, but that was like a like special. That's but different. that's that was different. It was like a special thing to know that she was a I didn't even know Samus was a woman until like Smash Brothers Melee. Like yeah. I just I, assumed it right. she was a guy. And I, I think it's cool that you looking back that that something that I really worry about being like, oh God, gamers, all people think about is Lara Croft and her giant boobs and how they're completely meaningless outside of selling <laughs> copies of things to adolescent boys. But it's yeah. cool that you look back and you're it's like, right, words. someone who's it's like me. I do. As somebody who's like voluptuous, I don't know how to put this. She's got I curves. Would, I, would, I, got, I got curves. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was really cool to feel myself Groovy identified thing. a little bit in a character, even though that was an unrealistic body type in a lot of ways. Sure. It was polygonal. Everything's unrealistic <laughs> there. True. The cup didn't look like a cup, but we accepted it. I mean, it. nobody's ever going to have Cloud's hair, let's be honest. <laughs> You're That's right. It's right. way too toward that large. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Without if going, he's too skinny to carry something that big, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> right. But in that moment, like, I felt her almost crush worthy because it was just like, yes, finally, this thing. I'm There's in a love woman, with a this. A lady crush. Yeah. Yeah. That's See? awesome. Uh, <laughs> Funnily enough, it's uh, it's actually Camilla from Fire Emblem. Oh, oh. <laughs> she's, she's um, she rides on a dragon with like an axe, and she's like super loving and like protective. Yeah, and she'll like crush anyone that tries to like interfere with like her family and and yeah, you yeah. know. So again, you know, like like Chris, a very passionate character, you know. 
Did was she? How new is she? Like, because I, I don't think I recall her playing them on the Game Boy Advanced Fire Emblem. Yeah, so um, I think it's from Fates, so Birthright and Conquest. I think that's like maybe four years ago. Okay, so she's pretty. That was your yeah. first one. Was four years ago? Well, I mean, so there's, there's that childhood <laughs> one where it was like Yuffie, right? Yeah. And yeah, then yeah. I didn't really like, like really like a character until until Camilla, I guess. Ah, okay. Yeah. Cool. And did Allison get to say hers outside of Laura Croft? After talking about it, I think Leon Kennedy yes. from, yeah. from Leon. Resident Evil is probably a really good bubble of my type. Yeah. So, yeah he's pretty steamy, good hair. Stoic. Kind of, he's got, he's tortured. Like, he's got some of that tortured. Yeah, but like sassy a little bit. Yeah. He he did, he did, smart. He did a really long date with the president's daughter. (laughs) (laughs) But like, if if, if I were to nail down my type in a video game character, that's probably it. Probably it. Leon. I like Leon. 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 He's like, ugh. Um, I didn't get to say mine either, so I'm going to say go, mine. Go, Dan, go. Sorry. Um, so, because I'm, I, it's something that I'm recently playing because of the finish all the games hashtag 2019, which is bleeding into finish all the games, finish more games 2020. M-O-A-R. Uh, <laughs> M-O-A-R. You will lose. Um, no, I won't. Uh, I have so many long games to finish. The uh, I've been playing Uncharted and Elena Fisher, who's in that. Uh, wait, um, which, which one is Elena? The OG? She's, she's OG, but yeah. she's through all of them. Yeah. So like it's, and it's kind of like, one, the fact that she's kind of like this, uh, like almost Carrie Fisher esque Princess Leia sort of character. Yeah, she's like she, right, and much like Carrie Fisher, she, her job is like to keep Nathan Drake honest. She's like also, calls him on and shit. Yeah, but also she can hold her own whenever she can like throw the sass like back. yeah, she throws the sass back. She can like she can hold a gun even though like she's like a reporter. Said Carrie Fisher versus Leia. No, yeah, because, because it's because Carrie, Carrie Fisher's Fisher been like is amazing. <laughs> like like in anything that she's ever done, she always plays the same yeah. type of character. It's oh, always yeah. someone who's but, like But her in real life is even like more more yeah, badass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. yeah, and it's and it's just like the 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 character that she is in those games, I'm just like, oh my god, I'm falling in love with this woman because <laughs> she's like one, she's always around, and those jeans, and those jeans, and Oof. it's it's mostly khakis, actually. <laughs> oh, is it? It's it's always like khakis, and like even though her cameraman's dead, she's still gonna keep going and find the story, and it's it's great. She's like, I, 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 she's great. I like her a lot. Nice. Don't tell How her. How great don't, is she? She's so great. Don't tell her though. I don't. <laughs> <know>. <laughs> All right, last question, and then we're out of here. So here's the thing. So there's no more questions that we're not gonna use. For actual topics on the podcast, because really, we're lazy. there's that many. Can yes. you do one, and we'll do like a I'm gonna ask, scratch I'm, the surface. I'm, I'm gonna ask. A, I'm gonna ask a question that I've been thinking about okay, because great. I'm a fan of the podcast. That's great. Too. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Are you, you listen? Really? I am. I do like. You it. like I listen, us? I listen to every. Ep- I don't know if you guys know this, but I listen to every single episode whenever it comes out. Like Me I don't. Too. I don't waste any time. Like whenever we say, "Here's a review copy," I go in and I'm You're like, on. "Okay, I'm gonna listen to it because I want to know what like how it sounds," and also like I forget. Because we drink beer whenever we do the podcast, so I <laughs> yeah, forget the second some of the half, things that we I say. Kind of forget. Yeah, it. I forget most of that most of the time. <laughs> um, but like, what's your favorite moment, like from the podcast so far? Like, if you have something that's happened. Oh God. Okay, I got one. Yeah. Okay, so okay. all right, so Ian, what's what's your favorite moment? So I I just tend to get generally nostalgic around Christmas times. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. And there was some Christian the Christian Christmas. <laughs> shenaniganry that happened last year that was really incredible but one of the things that we did is we did a night before christmas game brew edition and it was just so like cheesy and hilarious and like was for really some good. reason we were drawing pictures i can't remember Cause why because on oh, youtube and so we yeah. made like yeah oh, we, we made, made children's did, pictures right. yeah. i did the pictures and we made like they were well, we, we did a ton of pictures yeah. we all he did, did pictures. Pictures. there's a whole yeah. bunch it's on youtube go look yeah. it up oh, it's right. so we all did pictures it was real silly and i drew a butt and apparently this butt has become a topic of conversation in Carrie's house because she has yeah. her, like a two or three year old. Her three year old <laughs> loves it. Show me the box. Loves it. It's, it. So good. it's her favorite thing. So that that's a moment. His, that, sorry, that, not oh Carrie's. Oh god, it's so good. That kind of cracks me up. Yeah, I mean it's pretty recent in my memory, so that's probably why I'm bringing it up. But like, I really did enjoy the 24 hour stream. Yeah, because yeah, like I, fun. I have never actually had like a land party. And I've always wanted Aww. to, and that's like probably the closest wow. we've Aww. had to it. Aww. So like, that was a lot of fun for me. You, that's really. Cool. I've never had never that many. Like, I've party? never had like six people or, or, or however groups of people. I've done like, we did Fallout seventy six when it came out, 
and basically played that for 24 hours and it was a group of us and it was kind of like that it was pretty close but like mm. it, i've never done like a full-on land party nice. so like that was kind of really cool for me mine is <laughs> because i've been listening to the old uh the old podcast is the uh the inception of the mandatory fund commissioner who's a real guy but like <laughs> oh yeah the, totally yeah he's totally a real person but the fact because he pays rent and everything because ian did like a game on one podcast and then I did a game. Oh yeah. And then what happened is somebody talked to, I talked about like mandatory fun and it was like, Oh yeah, everybody has to participate even though they're on the podcast. I think it was Allison's first episode mm -hmm. was whenever we started talking about this and someone made the joke. It's like, Oh yeah, there's like a guy who's in charge of it. And then the next week, the man, the mandatory fun, the next week, the, the mandatory fund commissioner <laughs> showed up, and it was very great, especially just because his backstory is so messed up. It's so <laughs> nice you let him out of the bathroom. He's, he's here. Yes, I'm the mandatory fund commissioner, but it's uh, but just because he's like he's Australian. Yes. Um, him and Allison have been in a long term dom sub relationship. We can't, <laughs> true. We can't really figure out true. who's what in it, but somebody it trades. Something. It's fine. It's, it flips. It's it's we're switches. It's, don't it's kink like, shame me. There's no kink shaming in the game yeah i know uh, i actually love that too and i love that there's sort of like a little bit of a whimsical uh like canon to the podcast <laughs> somehow <laughs> that is also like it's just a real life podcast but for some reason we have made up like one day we're gonna have a it. fucking wiki yeah honestly. <laughs> we need like this episode 42 people need to is keep when up the <laughs> as they jump in on the first episode they need to know this backstory yeah, so. and like uh same with johnny two hammers, johnny two -hammers. Johnny he, he, two he's not around as much but johnny no two but he, he he his his name came out from a uh a drunken night of vermintide because <laughs> <laughs> i was playing i was playing a what you johnny fucking two hammers over there a dwarf and berserker that had two hammers and i was just hitting a bunch of shit and like, johnny he, works with two hammers look, he's, he's, you Johnny two hammers. Johnny two hammers. Hey. <laughs> Righteous. What about you? Super recent memory, but our interview with right. Tribal that was Wars. so fun. That was yeah. amazing. That was really that cool. Was so much which fun. you will hopefully have heard by now. But yeah. and if not, you yeah. can this, go yes. back to the last episode. Yeah. yeah, that was really cool. Just to have such a, a really great group of guys, and we like immediately connected with them. Yeah, which was awesome. So, yeah. what about it made it your favorite? I liked the interaction, and it's kind of. A nice introduction for me back into the game brew after a, a long hiatus. So, so glad you're back. It's like also a collision two of, of two my worlds. journey. It's in also kind game of like brew. writer uh, Alex's worlds collide, right? The Absolutely. music side and the gaming side. Oh, really that's cool. yeah, very did, true. Did, uh, didn't yeah. someone record their album or something like that? No, no, no. 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 <laughs> no. That's so weird. I thought so, but I, uh, I don't know who told you that. <laughs> um. So my favorite moment. I. It's really hard for me because like every, every episode, every episode, 69. Every episode <laughs> of the game brew, I really enjoy because I like, I like sitting with you guys and being forced to interact because honestly, I probably wouldn't <laughs> saying dumb shit. <laughs> Otherwise, because I'm very solitary, <laughs> um, other than this dude beside me, who's the intern who, uh, <laughs> did you be, you never brought me that coffee. I was actually really upset. Oh, 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 I should know. probably do that <laughs> right now. Do it back guys. <laughs> Um, Dan, you go get fee coffee. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's true. Replace. Hold on, um, let me stand up. <laughs> but like, honestly, like I'm very in my house. Don't talk to people. In introverted, mm. super introverted. So this is very nice for me in general. So it's hard for me to pick one, but I'm gonna pick. Dan and my's date night. <gasps> Yay! That was so fun. That was, was really so fun. fun. That was the first time we tried streaming. I loved so much wine. We drank so much wine. We got so drunk. I remember, we dated so many pigeons. <laughs> we dated so many pigeons. I remember halfway through, my mom like wandered in like, what are you doing? And I didn't tell her like we were doing the streaming thing, so I had to explain to her, like, Mom, don't get in the camera. Like, we're doing this thing really quickly. Like, And she's like, oh, that's so fun. Do you need anything? And I'm like... I'm out of wine. Go get me the other bottle. Oh like, my God, that was oh god. I don't know. I did it not was, feel good the next day. You all need to was, do another one though, because that oh, was. Oh, really we're gonna fun. do. We're gonna it do. Really we fun. have. We have more. We have like more things slated for that. So we we'll, do. We we'll, do. We have plans. Something. It's like these last few months have been a little crazy. So once we get yeah, since we're into the new year, I think we're gonna get our visual novel stuff. game will continue. Yes. Um, but it's fun. It's fun to have somebody else who's into that thing enough to do it with me which is really nice yeah so yeah, um everything, so. that's something i never expected out of the game brew so sure. that's something really unique and awesome that i've got I, and somebody who'll goof with me i so. honestly didn't realize before 
you joined the podcast that visual novels were such a big thing. <laughs> well, and, and I guess that's kind of the thing is like I I love hearing your guys' opinion because I feel like it's very different from mine, and the games you play are different from mine, and like it's it's nice to not be in an echo chamber. I don't like yeah, that. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, the so KFC, <laughs> the KFC love. Game. Right, and how excited am amazing. I about that? <laughs> Very. Um, like, and the pigeon game. Like, I'm so glad Dan got to play that. And, like, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, sorry, chat. I and uh, and so, Fia, I think this is your, <laughs> this is like, yeah, yeah. Do you, like, do you have a memory? I don't know. It's kind oh, of yeah. funny. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yay, it's Intern. Intern. He's been here forever. We just haven't mentioned it. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's definitely the 24-hour the um, the yeah, he yeah, joined the live us stream. for that. Yeah, he played yeah, he with did. us. I yeah. mean, he like it was us. super cool that you guys were able to do that for charity, right? That that was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It was but, super cool that all of the people out there in the community yes. gave yeah. so much to you. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Again, right. You guys still are, surprised. I'm, it, <laughs> you guys it's are great. insane. We didn't expect to make that much. We had to double right. our expected right. Like, like we, target. We, yeah. Goal. yeah, we we blew away our goal, which was great. Which your beautiful people. Thank you. Yeah. Next year, when we do it, it's going to have to be bigger. But it, it, in in addition to that, I I got to play with uh, you know Chris and Dan, uh, League of Legends. That that was cool. And oh, okay. you know, League of Legends has this. <laughs> well, that's no, fine. But I mean, like, it's just like, dude, like when you play League, you kind of have like when you, when you get paired up with randoms, they they typically are like get angry at or you toxic. for just yeah, yeah, they're just toxic. They get angry for you for, for like just messing up. But it's really cool to play with people that I know where we can just goof and have fun. <laughs> You know what I mean? To and, be honest, uh, we weren't going to do anything other than goof whenever we're playing <laughs> League of Legends. I'm not good no, enough to do that. No, you guys did no. really great. It was fun. It was good. Okay. Coming yeah. in blind, you all did amazing. Cool. Well, um, that is going to be it for us. Episode 69. Episode 69. Uh, I just want to say thanks to all the listeners out there. Thank you to everyone who um, uh, helped to make this podcast uh, possible this we live podcast, this yes. in person podcast are... possible, especially Woo! Alex Ryder, yes. especially Alex who's Ryder. working the sound claps, yes. design for this one. These are gonna and be awful. These of claps course, are be the worst. our intern fee. Thank you, fee. <laughs> yes, <Yay>! fee. <laughs> um, but that's gonna be it for us. So say good night, everybody. Good, good night, everybody. everybody. Oh, it's actually the first time it's ever been in time. <laughs>